I just got back from the store, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to turn all of this into a couple great meals that I can serve throughout the week. Stay tuned. <laughs> because they have chicken on sale this week at $2.99 a pound. And there's a couple things I want to show you here before we get started. First of all, when I got to the store, they had the advertised price for chicken, boneless, skinless chicken breast at $2.99 a pound. When I looked in the, um, the area, there wasn't any there. They only had the thighs. So, now some people would just say, oh, they're all out, you know, I'm going to leave. But it's a good idea when something that's advertised is not available or it doesn't seem to be available, ask one of the store representatives if they have it available or it's in the back or whatever. So I asked the butcher um, about that two ninety nine dollars pound chicken breast. And what he did, he, he went in the back and he said, you know what, it's not available or it's, you know, we're out. And he offered me another one that was in, you know, bulk in the actual butcher's cake. What I'm going to do, because I have several things that I'm going to be cooking that involve chicken, as I'm going through and prepping everything else, the first thing I'm going to do is cook the chicken. Now, there's a couple ways you can do it because all the recipes, you know, call for the same type of cooked chicken meat. If it's hot and you don't want to bring the heat into the kitchen, you can certainly pop these on the, um, the grill outside. You know, just rub it with your seasoning salt and some olive oil. Let it set for a while so it can marinate a little bit. And then throw it on that grill outside while you start to prepare everything else. It's a little bit of a time-saving thing that you can do. Now, for these, I'm actually going to just boil them. So I'm going to fill up my uh, big stock pot with some water, a little bit of salt. I have some seasoning I'm going to go ahead and throw into that water. And then I'm going to just pop the chicken in there and it can be cooking while I'm doing everything else. Now the second thing that I want you to take note of is how much of this is fruits and vegetables. Now I've seen um, pictures online before where people are like, you know, what does a typical family eat in a week? And, you know, they took uh, pictures from different families all over the world to see, you know, the different cultures and the different kind of food that they ate. The one thing that I noticed for the countries that are known for being the least healthy is that they also had the least amount of fruits and vegetables. So to combat that and kind of help things up a little bit, be sure to add a good amount of the colorful stuff into your diet. You will notice that I also have some stuff here that is processed and canned and there are some ingredients in my other things that have, you know, that I can't pronounce. Um, but I also realize that a lot of families are uh, stressed for time. So it's kind of like the lesser of two evils. You know, you can go through the drive through um, get a quick meal that might not be all that healthy, or you can do a little pre-planning and use some ingredients that are already made for you, the least of the evils, and, you know, get something ready at home at the beginning of the week. That way throughout the week, that stuff's already done, and when you come home, the whole idea is you can pop it in the oven. If the kids come from home from school before you get home from work, have them pop it in the oven, and you can sit down and have a meal at home, and it's a lot more healthy than running through a drive through Now, the other thing I liked with Ralph's this week are is the fact they had a uh, five by five mix and match um, sale. Now. I picked up the cashew crackers. They were in that five for five offering, and I'm going to use these to prep some lunches and snacks. You know, a lot of times you see the um, the lunchables, and you can easily make something similar. But I chose cashew because of the ingredient list. You know, there's some whole wheat stuff in here, um, as opposed to some. I looked at the other crackers because that's what I was looking for. It's crackers. And it was, you know, unbleached flour and a lot of sugars and stuff. So this was the lesser of the two evils, so I picked these up. The other thing that I found, which I've never tried before, so I'm going to try this brand. Um, I'm going to try some, I'm going to use some enchilada sauce. And this brand here I have never used before, but I did notice that on the labeling it had less unpronounceable items than the 
uh, major manufacturer. Now, the only thing I'm not sure of is that um, this does say it's a product of Mexico. I do not know if their labeling requirements are the same as in the states. So it is possible that you know there might be some some uh, preservatives and stuff in here that are not listed on that labeling. Um, so I just know that that's a possibility. But looking at the labels between this one and the major brand, um, this seemed more whole. Um, the next best thing, if you are a cook and you have the time, get some tomatillas, get a great recipe, and make your own enchilada sauce. It's not that hard. Okay, so having said all that, I'm going to start my water, get my chicken boiling, and I'm going to start chopping up some of these vegetables. And I'll check back with you in just a little bit, and I'll show you what I've come up with. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm back. Now, it's been about an hour and a half since I turned the camera off, and I've been doing all the prep work for several meals. So let me show you where I am at right now and then I'll explain the next step to you so that if you're trying to do a similar thing you know where we're going. Um, now I have everything covered here. So first off what we have is um, I'm going to be making some chicken enchiladas. Now when you're making any kind of casserole dish like an enchilada or a lasagna it's just as easy to make two or three of them than it is that it is to make um, one. So when you're doing a meal like that, if you want to do a little bit of advanced cooking, throw one or two in the freezer. It's a great idea and it's really simple. So what I have here, I had about six pounds of chicken breast. And here I just boiled these and um, shredded them. So that was the prep for this. Now here's what I'm going to be doing and making with this. Um, I'm going to be making two chicken enchilada dishes, the same one. One I'm going to freeze for later and one we're going to eat within the next 24 to 48 hours. So that one will go into the refrigerator until I'm ready to pop it into the oven. In addition to that, since I have corn tortillas and avocados and sour cream and all that kind of stuff, I had a packet of fajita mix. So I only put in half of the packet into some of the shredded meat. You can see there's probably about two handfuls in here. So about two to three cups worth. Um, and I put the half packet in with some water. I chopped onions and um, threw a handful of those in. Plus I had a little bit of a bell pepper. Um, so that's going to be some mix. So throughout the week, either this can be a full second dinner for us, or it can be lunches, or you can even freeze this and um, save it for later. So this can be another meal. So let me show you a third meal that we have with the stuff that was prepped. A chicken salad. Now these, you've probably made chicken salad and it's pretty simple. So I have the chopped lettuce here and you know how at the stores you can go and they have the pre-packaged salad kits. Those are great, they're convenient, the bags are pretty, la 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 la. Now what I have found, this is actually um, one of the um, bunches of romaine lettuce. So let me grab it. This package here, it's three romaine hearts is how it's packaged. And this that I showed you is one romaine heart section chopped up. So if you're looking at the amount of lettuce that is there, for the price you pay for this bag of three romaine hearts, you're actually getting the equivalent of about three of those individual salad things. So what I'm saying is rather than have them prep the lettuce for you, it's very easy to take one of these, chop it up, and you're set with a base for the salad. The key here is you don't want to put anything into your lettuce that's really wet. So in this thing, I'm going to add, I chopped up some carrots, I'll throw that in there. I chopped up some celery, I'll throw that in there. That's it for the dry stuff. I do, I did chop the tomatoes and they are all ready and set to go. However, I'm not going to um, include them in with this mix because it's going to make the lettuce soggy. So you only want to put things in here that are kind of pretty dry. And then on top of this, I'll take some of the chicken that I made um, and I would either take the, uh, just the boiled chicken there or I could add some seasoning to it and put it on there. In fact, 
the fajita mix I made would be a great addition to that. And, you know, slice up your avocados or, you know, throw raisins in there or whatever you love in your salads. You can easily put that in there. Now, here's another tip when it comes to salad is I'm going to try out this honey mustard dressing. When I make my salads for the family, you know, sometimes you end up, you know, the kids will just, you know, gob salad dressing over it and you're like, oh my gosh, is there any lettuce in there? And um, <laughs> it's kind of hidden under all the dressing. What I do is I will pre, right before serving, you want, don't want to do this like days ahead, because again, back to that moisture thing. But right before serving, I'll take a little bit of this and mix it in with the salad. And I just mix it with my hands. Um, and I might only put like maybe three tablespoons into this whole thing. Because what it does is when you can get in there and you actually mix it all up really good with your hands, then you get the flavor of the dressing on every single piece of salad. And what you, what's, what a good idea is to train yourself to do is go ahead and have them taste it that way with the dressing already remixed or mixed into it. And if they decide that they need to add more for their, their taste, absolutely add more. That's, that's their choice. But it can encourage a smaller amount of dressing to be used, which means a smaller amount of the bad stuff. Now, not everything in dressing is bad. Um, I recently read an article when I was doing some um, uh, research on carrots. And they were talking about all the vitamins, vitamins that um, are very good for you in raw fruits and vegetables. And one thing they said is some of those vitamins are um, water-soluble vitamins and some of them are fat-soluble, which means that if it is a fat-soluble vitamin, then if you eat those foods, in, like carrots and some of the stuff you have in a salad, if you eat it with some sort of a good fat, like an olive oil or something like that, it actually helps your body to absorb more of the nutrients from that food. So, you know, a little bit of fat is good. And like I said, if you wanted to make your own dressing from scratch, you can certainly do that. But as a time saver, um, you know, buy the best dressing that uh, you can. But, uh, you know, try to reduce the amount of, act of what actually goes in the salad so your salad is not drowning in dressing. Okay, so the, the um, as I said, the next thing I'm going to use uh, or make is the ch chicken enchiladas. Now, the ingredients, I'll have all of these recipes, your shopping list, and, you know, the, the prep order and all of that in the link on this page. So you can get all that. Don't worry about it. And here's the other cool thing when you make these at home. When you buy the, the frozen... Um, entrees in the grocery store. Um, you get a lot of extra stuff in there that you don't really want, but you also do not have any control over how much of any single ingredient goes in there. A lot of times you'll find if they have like a chicken dish, you might have like very few pieces of chicken and a heck of a lot of cheese. So when you make this, you can actually monitor how much cheese you put in here. So I mean, I have quite a bit in here. I won't I'll probably use what's in here for both, for you know, two. Um, so that way, you really don't need that much. A little bit does go a long way. So when you make it at home, you can adjust how much you're putting in there to what your family likes, and you know, cut cut it back a little bit every single time. You know, put more fruits and vegetables in there. You can throw spinach in there, or uh, red bell peppers, or anything you want. Because casseroles are really pretty simple. So you just layer everything on there. Your tortillas that you're layering would take the place of like a lasagna noodle if you're, you know, making a lasagna. So it's just that same concept of layering. So I will show you what I end up with when it's all. So the other thing I have here is um, my kind of lunchable replacement. Uh, rather than make something or purchase something pre-made that has lunch meat in it, which has um, the nitrates, um, you can make your own, and it's really simple. So what I hear is, I, what I have here is, I had some cheese. I put about uh, three, four, five slices of a cheddar cheese. You can slice them as thick or as thin as you like. I have grapes. I have apples. I have actually soaked these in a little bit of lemon water um, to help prevent some of the browning. I've got some chips in here, or not chips, the cashew crackers, some celery. A half of a chicken breast that I sliced up, and I also have a dollop of um, 
hummus. So this right here could be a lunch that either you take to work or you send off with your kids. And the container, this container I actually got, this is from like Chinese takeout or something, but you can get containers like this at a, like a restaurant supply store, like Smart and Final. And then that way, um, if you're buying them, you know, like the food packagers do, if for some reason the kids throw them away, it's not a big deal. It's not like they're throwing away your best Tupperware. So you can get several of these and get creative. Put whatever in here your family loves. I've done it where I've done like a, a I mix some tuna with an avocado and some salt and pepper and olive oil. That's it. Very simple. No mayonnaise because when you put the avocado in there, you don't need it. Um, I had crackers and fruit, and that was you know the, a meal that we took to the beach. So you can decide what kind of protein you're putting in here, what kind of fruits and vegetables, and everything. And you can make several of You can control what your kids want. And hey, why not have them pitch in and help pick out the ingredients? Because then you know it's something that they have ownership of, and they'll love it. That's it for now. So let me get the enchiladas put together, and I'll be right back. So that took all of about 15 minutes to put together. So as you can see, it's really not that difficult. So from about the time that I started to now, we're looking at roughly over two hours for prep. And I'm going to show you everything that we have. And I'm also going to give you a list of everything that was done, including the shopping list and the, and the um, recipes. So if you want to duplicate this, Add your own stuff and give me comments if you have additional suggestions, go right ahead. To get that report or the, the uh, printout of all that information, just click the link that's on this page and give me your, um, your name and your email address and I'll shoot that over to you right away so that you can do stuff like this every week to kind of save time on the front or on the back end by putting a little work on the um, front end or is it the other way around? I don't know. But anyways, let me show you what we have here. So here, let's see if you can see that. So here's what we've got. I've got the two enchiladas ready to go. One for now, one for later. Right here, I have the um, chicken that we're going to use for the chicken salads. We've also got the chicken right here that's ready for um, chicken tacos. And as you can see here, we've got the salad mix ready to go. And we have also have leftover three, uh, about three cups of onions, chopped onions. Those are already ready. So I've in individually packaged them, squeezed out the air. These are going to go in the freezer. So next time I want to cook something, let's say I want to do something um, with eggs, I've got the onions already chopped and ready to go. So that's it. So, thanks so much for stopping by. And remember, if you want to get that report, be sure to click the link on this page and I'll send it to you right away. So you can start doing stuff like this every week for your family to save time, money, and maybe eat a little bit more healthy than the drive throughs So, thank you so much for stopping in by. And until next time, stay healthy and live fully. Thank you.